Every state has some areas that are doing well and some areas where the people are struggling. Sometimes it's due to an economic downturn in one industry that takes down the whole area, and sometimes the communities didn't have anything to begin with. Indiana is no exception to this. In this video, we're taking a brief look at the 10 counties with the lowest median household income. Question of the day, what do you think the common denominators are between these counties? Stick around until the end to find out. Number 10, Orange County. Orange County has a population of 19,646 spread out over 7,880 households. This is down 1% from the previous census. The county seat is Paoli, which is a small town of 3,697. Orange County was first settled in 1811 by a group of Quakers who came from Orange County, North Carolina. They left the South because they disagreed with the institution of slavery and they brought several freed slaves with them. Those freed men were given 200 acres of land, which others heard about, so in time, this area became part of the Underground Railroad. Home values in this area averaged $94,700, with 74.4% of the residences being occupied by the homeowner. Those who rent pay an average of $623. Only 83.2% of the adult residents have graduated from high school, which is lower than the state average of 88.8%, and only 10.9% of the residents in Orange County have a bachelor's degree. This helps explain the 14.1% poverty rate that they have in this area. Almost all age groups are affected by poverty in this area, but women between the ages of 35 and 44 have the largest number affected. Manufacturing is the top industry in this area, accounting for 25% of the workforce. Accommodations and food service comes in second at 13.8%, and the number three spot goes to healthcare at 11.1%. This helps explain the low income for Orange County. Factories don't pay as well as they used to, food service is notorious for not paying a living wage, and in the category of healthcare, you'll find that a chunk of that is made up of people working as certified nursing assistants, which is the lowest rung on the healthcare ladder, so despite the heavy workload, it doesn't pay all that well. The median household income is $47,917. Due to the low wages, 20.8% of the county's residents are on Medicaid, and another 8.71% go without health insurance. Number 9, Jay County. Jay County has a population of 20,436, which represents a 3.8% loss over the last decade. The county seat is Portland. The name is a bit strange for a landlocked area, but it was named after Portland, Maine. Portland is a tiny town of 6,002, whose claim to fame is for being the hometown of serial killer Oscar Rabel, and so that's fun. The largest industry in Jay County, by far, is manufacturing. It accounts for 32.8% of the jobs in this area. The second largest is healthcare at 13.2%, and the number three spot goes to retail at 8.87%. None of those industries are likely to make a person rich, and that is reflected in the median household income of $47,658. The poverty rate is 12.5%, and the group most impacted by poverty is women between the ages of 25 and 34. Being poor makes it harder to afford health care, so in this area, 18.8% are Medicaid recipients, and another 10.8% are uninsured. On top of that, 15.4% of the adult residents have diabetes. The high school graduation rate for Jay County is on par with the state average, but only 11.4% have a bachelor's degree, compared to the state's rate of 26.5%. 73% of the homes are occupied by the homeowner, and homes in this area have an average value of $91,400. Those who rent pay an average of $677. Number 8, Knox County. Knox County has a population of 36,594. Over the course of the last 10 years, they've lost 4.8% of their residents. 18,000 of the residents are in the workforce, with 15.5% in manufacturing occupations, 15.4% in healthcare, and 11% in retail. The highest paying jobs in this area are in mining, but that industry only accounts for 3.22% of the available jobs, so the median household income is $47,380, and they have a poverty rate of 12.7%, which affects women between the ages of 18 and 24 more than other groups. Higher than average poverty and low wages means that 18.7% of the county's residents are on Medicaid and 7.92% are uninsured. The county seat for Knox County is Vincennes, which is known for being the hometown of comedian Red Skelton. 
Vincennes is also the oldest European settlement in Indiana that has been continually inhabited since its founding. Home values in this area average $96,800 and the home ownership rate is 64.6%. Renters can expect to pay an average of $659. The high school graduation rate is on average with the state at 88.7%, but only 16.9% of the residents have earned a bachelor's degree, which helps to explain the low median income and the higher than average poverty rate. Number seven, Wayne County. Wayne County has a population of 65,884. That is after a population loss of 4.5% from the 2010 census. The county seat is Richmond, but the Census Bureau considers Richmond to be part of the Dayton, Ohio metropolitan area. This area is known for its musical past. Richmond was the location of a record label and recording studio called Gennett Records. They were known mostly for their jazz recordings of such luminaries as Louis Armstrong, King Oliver, Jelly Roll Morton, and Blind Lemon Jefferson. Even Gene Autry and Lawrence Welk recorded albums there. Gennett Records was in operation from 1917 until around 1948. If you visit Richmond, you can go down the Gennett Walk of Fame. Richmond's history of welcoming black musicians during the first half of the 20th century makes it seem a little odd to me that at the same time, Wayne County also had a rather large clan presence, including their very own meeting house. Robert Lyons, who was a Richmond resident, served as the national chief of staff for the organization. Another fun fact, cult leader Jim Jones also grew up in the Richmond area. Hopefully they've gotten rid of the crazy there, but I wouldn't recommend drinking the Kool-Aid if you visit. The percentage of county residents who have earned a bachelor's degree is 18.2%, which is lower than the state of Indiana's average of 26.5%, despite having two colleges within the county, Indiana University East and Earlham College. One-fifth of the degrees awarded in Wayne County are in general business, and 13.9% are in registered nursing. The percentage of high school graduates is 86.5%. Homes in this area have an average value of $100,500, and the home ownership rate is 66.9%. Renters pay an average of $688. The three largest industries are manufacturing at 19.8%, healthcare at 18.1%, and retail at 11.7%, so the median household income is $46,516, and the poverty rate is 15.2%. Women between the ages of 35 and 44 are the most likely to live below the poverty line. As with the previous counties on this list, the residents have a hard time being able to afford healthcare, so 18.5% are Medicaid recipients, and 12% are uninsured. Number six, Fayette County. Fayette County has a population of 23,102. They've lost 4.9% of the residents in the last decade. This might be due to the fact that there's nothing in this area. There is only one incorporated town, the county seat of Connorsville. The rest of it is farms, woodland, and tiny unincorporated settlements. It's not that easy to get to because there aren't any US or interstate highways going through the area. The guy who invented Sudoku came from Connorsville, so they have that at least. Another reason cited for the population loss is that there aren't that many unionized jobs in this county anymore. Manufacturing is still the number one industry in the area, making up 26.5% of the jobs, but most of those jobs aren't unionized, so they don't pay as well as they once did. The second largest industry is healthcare at 20.5%, the median household income is $46,175, and 13.5% of the residents fall below the poverty line. Women ages 35 to 44 are the most affected by poverty. The high school graduation rate is below the state average at only 82.1%, and only 13.3% of the residents have completed a four-year degree. This makes sense if there aren't any jobs in the county. People go off to college and find jobs elsewhere when there isn't anything for them to do in their chosen fields. Those who do stay and work in Fayette County have an average commute time of 27 minutes, so it looks like there are quite a few people driving over to Richmond, which is 26 miles from Connorsville, for work. When there aren't any decent jobs, it makes it really hard to pay for health care, so 19% of the county's residents are on Medicaid and another 10.5% are uninsured. Number 5. Vigo County or Vigo County. As far as I can tell, the people who live in this area aren't even sure which pronunciation they want to use. Where I live in Illinois, I'm able to get the Terre Haute television station, and the news anchors pronounce the county name both ways. I do know that it was named after Francis Vigo, who was an Italian who helped the Americans during the Revolutionary War, so it should be pronounced Vigo, but we Midwesterners sometimes make our own rules. 
The county population is 107,038. They've lost 0.8% of the population over the last 10 years, so this is the only entry on the list that hasn't lost a significant chunk of their residents. This is partially explained by the fact that people from Paris, Illinois, which is right over the border, are moving there for work. The county seat is Terre Haute, which is the location of a federal prison that is famous for housing several high-profile criminals. Timothy McVeigh served out his sentence there. Terre Haute is also home to Indiana State University, the Rose Holman Institute of Technology, and St. Mary of the Woods College, so as would be expected, the education rates for this county are higher than the others on this list. 25.1% of the adult residents have earned a bachelor's degree. However, the high school graduation rate is on par with the state's rate, which means that almost 12% of the adults don't have a diploma. Lack of a diploma makes it hard to find a decent paying job, so the poverty rate is 20.8% and it affects 18 to 24 year old women more than any other group. The median household income is $45,230. 18.5% of the people in Vigo County are on Medicaid and 8.49% go uninsured. The three largest industries are healthcare with 15.7%, manufacturing with 14.9%, and educational services at 12.7%. Terre Haute has two hospitals and a heart center, so it makes sense that healthcare is the number one industry for this community. The highest paying jobs are in utilities, but that only makes up 1.03% of the jobs in this county. The home ownership rate is 61.8%, and the home value is $97,500. Renters pay an average of $746. Number four, Grant County. Grant County has a population of 65,769. Since the last census, they have lost 6.1% of their population. The county seat is Marion, which was the hometown of actor James Dean. He was born in an apartment building on the corner of McClure and 4th Street in 1931. This is also the town where actress Julia Roberts married country musician Lyle Lovett in 1993. 68.4% of the residences in this area are occupied by the homeowner, and the average home value is $92,700. Renters pay an average of $700. The high school graduation rate is just a little under the state average at 87.2%, and 17.9% of the adult residents have a bachelor's degree. They have two higher education institutions in this county, Indiana Wesleyan University and Taylor University, and twice as many women earn a degree than men. 24% of the degrees awarded are in business administration, and 22% are in registered nursing. Fewer people with an advanced education means that it drags down the average earnings, so Grant County has a 16% poverty rate, which affects women between the ages of 25 and 34 the most, and the median household income is $44,356. The largest industries are manufacturing at 17.8%, healthcare at 16.4%, and educational services at 14.6%. The retail trade also makes up a large chunk of the employment opportunities in this county, with 12.2% of the jobs available, putting it in fourth place. Besides economic issues, Grant County also has health problems. They have the largest percentage of obese adults out of the state of Indiana, with 39.1% of the adult residents having a body mass index above 30%. 9.03% of their residents don't have health coverage, and another 20.8% are on Medicaid. Number 3, Delaware County. Delaware County is the most populous county on the list, with 114,135 residents, but that is a 3% loss since the 2010 census. The county seat of Delaware County is Muncie, which is the location of Ball State University and Ross Medical Center Muncie campus. Thanks to the presence of these higher learning institutions, this county is one of the more educated on the list. 89.7% of the county's adults have earned a high school diploma, and 23.7% have attained a bachelor's degree. The largest employer in Muncie is IU Health Ball Memorial Hospital, and the second largest is Ball State University, so the two most prevalent industries for Delaware County are healthcare at 16.3% and educational services at 15%. Manufacturing is in the third spot with 12.7% of the workforce, and retail rounds out the top four with 12.1%. The median household income is only $43,512, and the poverty rate is 21.5%. Women between the ages of 18 and 24 are the most likely to fall below the poverty line. However, almost twice as many women earn degrees than men, with women receiving 3,907 degrees, compared to 2,061 for the men. Usually, you'll see that when the area gives out more degrees in a female-dominated field, like registered nursing, but in Delaware County, women are earning degrees in a wide variety of fields, as you can see in this chart. 
Number two, Blackford County. Blackford County has a population of only 11,758. They've lost 7.9% of their residents since 2010. I think the main reason that they still have the population that they do is that the home ownership rate is 74.7%. It's really hard to move when you have a house that you can't unload or rent out. The average home value is $70,600 and renters pay an average of $644. Blackford County only has three incorporated communities, including the county seat of Hartford City. The rest of this area is unincorporated settlements and ghost towns. Manufacturing makes up 30% of the jobs in this region. Five of the six largest employers in this county are in production, so it's no wonder that there are so many people working in that field. The second largest industry is healthcare with 13.5%, and the third largest is educational services at 10.3%. The median household income for Blackford County is only $43,505, and they have a poverty rate of 12.8%, with women ages 55 to 64 being the most affected. The poorest county in Indiana, based on the median household income of only $41,662, is Crawford County. This county only has 10,577 residents. This is down 1.3% since the last census. The county seat, since 1893, is a town of 645 people called English. It was originally called Hartford, but the name changed in 1884 when it became an incorporated town. The name change was in reference to an Indiana politician named William Hayden English. The average home value for Crawford County is $91,900, and 82.6% of the residences are occupied by the homeowner. The remaining 17.4% who rent pay an average of $673. Manufacturing is the most prevalent industry, with 1,057 people working in that field. It accounts for 24.2% of the jobs. 14.9% of the jobs are in healthcare, and 10.3% are in retail. However, the average commute time for workers in this county is 35 minutes, so it seems that many of the jobs are located elsewhere and people are having to drive a distance for work. This might help explain why Crawford County has the third highest rate of motor vehicle crash deaths in the state. The poverty rate for this area is 16.5%, with women between the ages of 35 and 44 being impacted the most. The high school graduation rate is well below the state rate at only 80.4%, so that would explain the high poverty rate. When almost one-fifth of the adult population hasn't earned a diploma, there are going to be a lot of people working in low-wage jobs. Only 10.3% of the county's residents have earned a college degree. So what do all of these counties have in common? Two of the top three industries in every one of them are manufacturing and healthcare. The third spot goes to either retail, food service, or education. The median household income is less than 48,000, and the poverty rate is well above the state rate of 11.9%. The number of people in these communities who go on to get a college degree is way below the state rate of 26.5%, and at least 15% of the residents are on Medicaid. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If so, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to support the channel, consider subscribing or taking a look at the affiliate links in the description. There's a promo code for a discount on photography classes and a few other things down there. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I remain stuck in the Kernfield. field.